Let's get straight into what we see out of Europe right now and these soaring gas prices. I want your reaction to this. Is this going to be transitory or are we going to see wider implications for consumers and the broader economy? Well, I think a lot of people are seeing what's happening in Europe and it's bringing to light the important discussion around energy transition and the importance that we have around gas as well. Whether it be transitory or prices remain high, I think it's still early to see. But definitely it brings the debate about energy transition and also the importance of a company like us in energy technology, enabling the energy transition. Right, so what's going to happen next, do you think, Lorenzo? Are we, are we going to see the government stepping in here to backstop some of these small and large suppliers? Is it in your view so Europe can keep the lights on this winter? Look, I think there's going to be an aspect of uh, people coming together and discussing those elements. I think the important aspect is, again, we need energy security, and that's a topic at hand. And uh, look, there's around the world. Uh, there's plenty of uh, energy available. It's a question of bringing it to the market. And if we think about the energy transition, we think there's three hard truths. First, together, accelerate the move towards decarbonization, eliminating emissions. Secondly, are here to stay. And they're here to stay. And natural gas, in fact, is a key element. And thirdly, we collaborate and actually adopt the new technologies that are available. So help me understand how Baker Hughes is navigating all of this, because as I see it, as I mentioned, we need investments to help decarbonise, but we also need investment into fossil fuels to guarantee security and supply. So as an energy technology company, how do you lean into that? Well, we really see three ways, and there's an aspect of doing more that we can do today with technology that's existing. And as an energy technology company, we can actually reduce the emissions of hydrocarbons today. When you look at just driving efficiencies in our operations, you know, if you look at 10% uh, efficiency in the oil and gas industry can actually reduce half a gigaton of CO2 emissions, and that's already 5% of the Paris Accord. There's other technology that can be applied in our operations, and that's what we provide. So firstly, it's doing better what we can do today by driving efficiencies. Secondly, it's the investment in new technology, such as carbon capture, economy, and we've got new frontiers that we can move into from an energy mix perspective, and we see those technologies, and broader with energy storage and also looking at uh, the new energy mix evolving. Gas is here, it's key as we go from a transition, and it's not just a transition, it's a destination fuel as well. Okay, a destination fuel, so expand on that a little more for me. What role do you think gas is going to play in this long march to net zero? Well, I think you just have to look at Europe and look at the United States with regards to the way they've been successful in the last decades to actually reduce their CO2 emissions. You've seen a shift from coal to natural gas, and that's going to continue as you look at it from an emissions profile. Also, natural gas, when you put uh, the element of CCUS, can actually be decarbonized as well. So you can reduce the footprint of uh, natural gas from an emission standpoint. It is already one efficient fuels and we think it's here to stay and our outlook has been very positive with regards to natural gas and LNG. And you're seeing increased investment in that space right now? We are and uh, actually we've even stated that by 2030 we think there needs to be an installed capacity of 800 million uh, tons of LNG and those investments are taking place over the course of the next few years.